with, Dr. Smith, her and her staff. They're there to uh, help you each and every day, man. Call them up. Get your new patient packet at myfirstchoicecare.com. Then call them up, 870-800-9002. Dr. Smith just loves helping everybody. OCMC's Chemical Dependency Unit, reminding you that you're not alone. Addiction's a tough thing to get past. You need to make the choice to be a better you. You can do that with help from the professionals. 870-836-1289, 1-800-232-1289. All calls are confidential. <sighs> Mitch Lowe's Body Shop. Auto body and collision repair, framework, glass work, refinishing, all accidents, large or small. Mitch Lowe's can handle it all. Look, if you get put in the ditch, just call Dave. Maria at Mitch Lowe's Body Shop. Dave? 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 Dave who, man? Dave's got the stuff, man. Yeah, well, you know, Dave needs to get up off of it. <laughs> Uh, dial 837-2560 and ask for Dave. He's got the bumper, man. <laughs> you know, there's a whole slew of jokes. There. <laughs> I'm just going to let them all go this morning. It's Monday. It's too early for me. Uh, let's see. Stories, Floor and Carpet, 2004 Lorraine down in El Dorado. Financing is available with approved credit at Stories, Floor and Carpet. They've got that six-foot-wide boat carpet in stock. And they sell cleaning products for your flooring. Stories, Floor, and Carpet, 870-862-9446. And by our friends out at Everybody's Antiques down in Eldo Radio. That's where you're going to find an exceptionally wide variety of antiques, gifts, and collectibles, knickknacks, sports memorabilia, new tires, trailers, storage buildings. they got all sorts of stuff. Their stuff has stuff. They have 120 booths, 31,000 square feet. You can shop them online at everybody'santiques.com or call them up, 870 875 one four four four. We're gonna go ahead and take a break, man. Uh, Kelly Blair has a guest in the studio this morning. Yes, sir. We got John Dawson the third talking about some big Southwest regional tournaments coming up right here in Camden this coming weekend. All right. So uh, you ready for that, Doc? More sports? Yes. Uh, no, but I, <laughs> I gotta do what I gotta do. Well, you know, Doc loves sports like no other. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and give him a break. We'll be back here in about three and a half, four minutes for uh, Kelly Blair and John Dawson the third. Coming up, stay tuned. It's time to check the Radio Works South Arkansas Community Bulletin Board. The Ruby Snyder Ministry Center Food and Clothing Pantry Thrift Store, located at 133 Haynes Avenue in Camden, is open every Tuesday from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m., And from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. That's right. You can now go visit Ruby every Tuesday evening from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Ruby Snyder is accepting clothing and food donations when they are open. Local sports update. Hello, sports fans. With a look at local games and scores, I'm Kelly Blair. It was a big, big weekend for the Arkansas Pulpwood teams. As on Friday, the Camden 17 and under team finally claimed the elusive state title in the Dixie Pre-Major State Tournament before the 19 and under team followed with a dominant doubleheader sweep of Mina on Saturday. On Friday, the Pulpwood 17s defeated the Benton Harmony Grove Naturals 8-1 in a winner-take-all, if necessary, tournament final. The two teams had split with each other during bracket play earlier in the week that set up the final which was mostly dominated by pulpwood who got four and two-thirds innings of two-hit baseball from owen stover on the mound austin howard closed out the game for the home team it's the first time in all the years for john dawson the third coaching multiple age groups in multiple different leagues to win the dixie pre-major state title the win also qualifies the team to play in the dixie pre-major world series now that tourney is being held july 22nd through the 26th Then on Saturday, the Pulpwood 19 and under team faced a select team from Mina for a regular season doubleheader, and they swept both games in dominant fashion, winning the first game by the score of 9-0 in seven innings before taking the second contest by the score of 13-0 in five innings. This all sets up a huge weekend for the Camden teams now as the city will host not one but two regional tournaments. First, the Superior Floor and Design team will help host the 14 and under Junior Babe Ruth Southwest Regional being held at the Recreational Center of Washita County, while Pulpwood will host the 15 and under Junior Babe Ruth Southwest Regional Tournament at Camden Fairview High School. Meanwhile, Pulpwood will also send both their 16 and under and eight and 18 and under teams to play in their respective USSSA state tournaments in Hot Springs this weekend. That'll wrap it up for now with your sports update. I'm Kelly Blair. I'm the best there is at what I do, and what I do is sports. South Arkansas weather. 
Good Monday morning, everybody. We're expecting sunny skies today with temperatures near 96, but those heat index values are going to hit near triple digits, so do stay hydrated. Tonight, expect clear skies and an overnight low near 71. For Tuesday, sunny and hot with temperature near 98. Then on Tuesday night, clear in 73. For Wednesday, slight chance it rain. It'll be sunny with temperatures near 95. Out of the Radio Works Weather Center, I'm JJ. Good morning, South Arkansas. It's time for the Watchtower River Report for Monday, July 11th. Starting out with the river in Camden, the current gauge reading is 7.48 feet. Arkadelphia is currently at 5.7 feet. The current gauge reading at Thatcher Lock and Dam this morning is 77.84 feet. And at Morabay State Park, the gauge reading is 68.1 feet. The construction of the Naval Ammunition Depot at Shoemaker, now East Camden, began during World World War II in 1945 caused many changes to the communities here. The depot was intended for the assembling and testing of rockets for use by the U.S. Navy and other branches of the armed service. The land acquired for this endeavor comprised of about 69,000 acres taken from Washita and Calhoun counties and required the resettlement of hundreds of families. Private companies now own all of the facilities and some defense contractors still occupy some of the locations there. Reliability of this forecast is based on current and forecasted river and weather conditions for the National Weather Service in Little Rock. You guys have a great week and stay safe. All right, we are back on the round table. Monday edition. Today is Monday, July the 11th. It's 69 degrees out there. 735 on the AM side of the sundial. Somebody should do a study on the cities with the worst B.O. Oh, yeah, I I wonder how closely it would match up with this, okay? (laughs) Somebody ranked the 10 sweatiest cities in America by looking at things like average summer temperatures, humidity, how likely you are to feel a uh, nice breeze, and how easy it is to find some shade. Now, they also looked at population density, so being around other sweaty people was uh, something that they factored in. And after all of that, the sweatiest city in America is... New York. Orlando, Florida. I can believe that one. I lived in Orlando. I can attest to this. Okay. You can just kind of swim through the humidity. Right? Boom. All of the top ten are actually in four states. Florida, Texas, Louisiana, and Alabama. Hey, we didn't make the cut. Nope, we, you we, know why? We, we don't miss have nearly one. as many people. Now, we we got just as much humidity, and, you know, some of you really need to learn this new gimmick we got going on called deodorant. But, you know, hey, you know. We don't have as many people here in Arkansas. Dude, I already had to bust myself out and tell everybody I used my wife's deodorant the other day. So you I've been know, using my daughter's the last couple of days. I ran out. Boy, you know, I mean, I've got better than big, mine. It does. It smells prettier, too. It sure does. <laughs> hey, the 10 sweatiest cities in uh, America are Orlando, Corpus Christi, Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Tallahassee, Houston, Montgomery, Alabama, Cape Coral, Florida, Laredo, Texas. I can contest to that one, too. And Jacksonville, Florida. As far as America's America's biggest cities go, New York ranked 141st out of 200. L.A. is 184th, and Chicago is 146th. Well, it's cold up there half the time. I mean, yeah, well, you know, that. They, they get 99 degrees and a heat index 101. They think they're going to melt. You know what the heat index was this past weekend? Yeah, hot. <laughs> it was hot. It was Hot, I tell you, a lot. Just when you thought that thermometer couldn't go any higher, it did. Speaking of uh, hot and sweaty and getting out and playing and having fun. Yes, sir. We got John Dawson III uh, joining us here today, owner of Arkansas Pulpwood. So, you know, if you've got a big old plot of timber that you need uh, managed or, you know, help uh, cut it down and everything, John knows some guys. He can hook you up with uh, some uh, tree trimmers or some tree cutter downers and all that kind of stuff, get a good price for you. Uh, over at the mill, all that kind of stuff. Be sure and check out Arkansas Pulpwood and what they can do for you with your timber management. But I don't see how the man holds a full-time job because he is always out at the ballpark coaching a ball team. He's only got like three teams for Arkansas Pulpwood, uh, 15, 16 and under, 17 and under, 19 and under. And the 17 and under team just happened to win the Dixie Pre-Major State Tournament this past weekend. Of all the tournaments that Arkansas Pulpwood plays in all the years, because they play in U-Triple-S-A, Dixie Major, uh, maybe even Senior Babe Ruth, all that kind of good stuff, 
this is the elusive one that John had never won until this weekend, and he's still wearing a smile on his face. Right, John? Hey, definitely about that, Kelly. We were very proud of the boys, and, and uh, you know, it's the summertime ball is, is just grueling. And, uh, of course, the temperatures have been hot. And uh, But, you know, kids have, you know, just lots of things to do uh, in today's world. And we have only had that 17-year-old group all together uh, one weekend all summer. And uh, we still didn't have a full roster this past weekend, but we were able to win this thing. And and uh, the boys that, that did were able to show up uh, played exceptionally. Absolutely. Like you said, lots of stuff going on in, during the summer. This happened to be the uh, second week of the AAA dead period for high schools. So a lot of, a lot of families, you know, schedule their vacation this time of the year. Uh, but the guys that showed up did, uh, did show up and – played exceptionally in everything uh again you've finished as a runner-up in a couple of state tournaments this year you won a state tournament before this one as i understand uh but this was the elusive one i mean you you, you and i talked after the win you thought that you had real good chance to win this tournament a couple of times in the past and it always just kind of slipped away from you and it didn't look good when we got beat you know first game and on wednesday night but these guys came back through the losers bracket and took care of business they sure did, and um, you know we've had some really good teams in the past, and I think we've been competing at, with this for this thing for about eight or nine years, and and uh, we've never been able to win it. I think we've been one of the favorite teams to win it every year, and for some reason we just haven't been able to put it all together on this particular weekend, and and uh, you know starting out, boy, it was rough, and uh, we didn't play our best ball Wednesday night and got put in the losers bracket, but we were able to overcome the heat. And, uh, and overcome ourselves and, and uh, put everything together and really play well down the stretch. And, and uh, you know, it's a team that's, that uh, started out the summer that, that won uh, a 19 and under tournament uh, down in El Dorado and uh, competing above their age, age class. And uh, we were very proud of them then. We knew then that they were an exceptional ball club and if we could just keep them all here and and uh, participating, we knew we'd have something special. And, and uh, you know, I think when it when it all boils down to it, uh, you, you just got to show up and uh, you got to keep competing. Um, we've got a couple of people that have been there on this, this particular squad, kind of they flip-flop back and forth between two or three different squads for us during the summertime because of their age. And, uh, and they've gotten over 125 at-bats, um, plate appearances this summer. So some of these kids that show up and dedicate themselves to this uh, get a lot of reps in. And, that, and that's really what summer ball is all about, just getting reps and getting better for the future. Absolutely. I know you've had a lot of kids go on to have a lot of success on the high school level and uh, get uh, some scholarship offers from some of the local colleges around here and beyond and everything, like you said, uh, there's no, you're never going to get better if you don't go out there and, and play and get those reps, uh, field the ground balls, get the innings in, in pitching and uh, the at-bats and all that kind of stuff. You also picked up a big doubleheader sweep. Your 19 and under team beat a team from MENA, the MENA Mavericks, I believe it was. That was a select team as well. Completely dominated them, uh, 9 to nothing in the seven-inning game, 13 to nothing in the five-inning game. They look like they're rounding in, into form, and that comes at a really good time because you talk about a busy weekend. You've got a super busy weekend coming up, highlighted by Camden getting to host not just one but two regional tournaments. Uh, Camden has the opportunity this coming weekend, starting on Friday, of hosting the 14 and under and 15 and under Southwest Regional Tournament, Junior Babe Ruth, as I understand, Southwest Regional Tournament. Now, these these tournaments are played by teams who have already won some previous state tournaments. So this isn't just sign up and come. You actually have to qualify for this. Uh, the Southwest Region, I know, includes Texas, Louisiana, parts of Texas, Louisiana, I think Mississippi, Missouri, uh, all of our surrounding states, basically, Oklahoma, 
Uh, tell us a little bit about the 14 and under tournament. I understand it's going to involve six teams from all over. That's correct. And uh, you've got one of your friends here in town. Pulpwood actually doesn't field a 14 and under team, but you know somebody who did. That's correct, and um, we're, we're really honored to be able to host this particular regional tournament uh, for the for the Bay Ruth uh, program and uh, to showcase our community and showcase our complex and and uh, bring people in from multiple states to this area and uh, so we'll have a, a host team uh, participating through the Washtenaw County Recreational Center uh, will be the Camden team and it is coached by Todd Schrader and uh, and, and it's made up of kids here in the Camden community and uh, they'll be participating in the 14 and under bracket. We've got six teams as of right now. Uh, this thing could change uh, before the end of today, but today is the last day to, to get signed up for that thing. And um, we've got teams coming in here from Texas and Louisiana and Alabama and, uh, and, and Arkansas. And uh, so we're looking forward to that. Arkadelphia will be sending a team to this. Arkadelphia actually won 14 and under Junior Babe Ruth State Tournament up in Lone Oak uh, two weekends ago. And uh, so they'll be sending a team to this as the Arkansas winner. And that team is actually coached by a local uh, guy who grew up here, uh, Jonathan Simpson. Oh, okay. And uh, so we're proud to host them here. And uh, Bryant will be sending a team. And Camden, of course, I have one in. There's a team from Green Bay, Alabama, a team from Del Rio, Texas, and uh, a team from, I think how you say it is, Ponchatoula, Louisiana. Okay. So we're excited about that. And in addition to that, now that's the 14 and under uh, Junior Babe Ruth Southwest Regional Tournament, but we're also hosting the 15 and under uh, Southwest Regional Tournament. And there's going to be four teams in that, including one of your Arkansas Pulpwood teams. That's correct. And um, so we're going to play the 14 and under bracket over at the Washtenaw County Recreational Center. And we'll play the 15 and under bracket over at Camden Fairview High School. And we, I want to give a shout out to uh, Athletic Director Ricky Tucker in the, in the Camden Fairview School District for allowing us to play over there. And uh, we've been getting both fields ready all summer and cleaning everything up and getting it prepared. And so in the 15 and under bracket, we'll have one of the Arkansas Pupwood teams. Our 15 and under team will be the host team. And we'll also have teams from Lake Jackson, Texas, uh, Hereford, Texas, Tallahassee, Alabama, Wharton, Texas, and a team, I think, from Meridian, Mississippi participating in that. So I think we're going to have six in that division also. Well, that would be outstanding as well. And uh, I know... Again, just a whole lot of work goes into hosting each and every one of these tournaments and everything. Now, the exciting thing, and again, maybe yet to be determined, uh, some of these teams are able to qualify for tournaments, and then you kind of get down to, okay, that, that, that is a long way away, and there's a lot of hotel rooms and gas to be considered and all that. Some teams are able to make trips, and some teams aren't. Uh, but the winner of the 14 and under uh, Southwest Regional Tournament actually has a chance to go to Williamson or we Williston. Williston, North Dakota in August, August 11th through the 21st. And the winner of the 15 and under Southwest Tournament actually has a chance to go to the Junior Babe Ruth World Series in Virginia. So, I mean, kind of exciting when you have that kind of stuff sitting in front of you. Yep, yep. And this is, uh, you know, Things have, have gotten watered down over the years with all the divisions, with COVID and everything else. But uh, this, this, you know, a few years back was one of the most prestigious tournaments that uh, that you could host. And uh, I'm just very proud to be able to bring it to our community and to the Washtenaw County Rec Center. And um, uh, Miss Beth Osteen over at the chamber has been uh, outstanding, helping us uh, get some information out about our community and. Um, we're going to have people in here, uh, you know, obviously from four or five states, and, and uh, they're going to be staying in our hotels and eating in our restaurants for a few days and and uh, just looking forward to showcasing everything that we have to offer and how proud we are of our community. 
Absolutely. That's something that always kind of goes unnoticed. We do bring, uh, these tournaments do bring a lot of people into the community, as uh, John just mentioned and everything. I don't know if we're going to be able to afford a new fire truck when it's all over with, but it does help out some of the local eateries and uh, certainly the hotels and all that kind of stuff. But wait, there's more. You've also got a 16 and under team and an 18 and under team traveling over to Hot Springs to play in the USSA World Series uh, in those age divisions, right? So, uh, I mean, you've got about five or six guys help you out with all these pulpwood teams. Y'all going to be stretched all over the place, aren't you? Oh, we all we always are stretched pretty thin during the summertime, but but this this weekend and next will be um, exceptional uh, for stretching us out. But uh, we we've got some great guys that help us out. My son uh, John D helps us coach. Uh, Paul Mosley, Jeff McKinney, uh, Bo Smith. Uh, we all kind of contribute to kind of where we need to be and with certain teams. And so we'll have. All, all three of our teams participating this weekend, uh, one here in Camden that we talked about, and two in Hot Springs. So it's going to be a long, hot weekend, and we'll be back and forth. And, and uh, I'm going to try to be everywhere at, at the same time uh, with all of them. But uh, I hate to miss any of it. We try to do all we can. But we got plenty of guys there to help out, thank goodness. Absolutely. And, of course, as soon as we get complete schedules, as soon as we confirm all the teams that are coming, We'll share that with everybody on our Radio Works Facebook page and uh, possibly our website and everything. Big weekend of baseball coming up. Multiple age groups, multiple different divisions and everything. And uh, I know uh, it's a labor of love for John Dawson. You know, believe it or not, he doesn't get paid extra for all this. He's really out there doing it for all the kids. Congratulations on the success that you've already had, John. And uh, best of luck going forward. Well, we appreciate everything that y'all do here at the radio station, and, and Kelly is, is uh, he's putting in as many hours as any of us uh, this past week, and he was there Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday uh, over to the rec center and and uh, giving the kids some publicity and putting their games on the radio for us, and, and uh, I, I've had several people reach out to me and say how much they appreciated you doing that and, and what a wonderful job you do, and, and uh, just can't say enough about what all y'all do here at the radio station for our community hey we appreciate that too so uh lots going on and everything it's a lot of fun guys i mean you see these kids out there playing some baseball personally now don't get me wrong i love my texas rangers i really love my arkansas razorbacks but it's a lot of fun watching these guys out there you know just playing for the love of the game and everything these youth kids you play uh you played little league growing up there doc uh, yeah i did in third grade Third grade, there you go. You capped out on the pitching machine, did you? No, actually, I was that kid that ended up in uh, outfield. Do what now? <laughs> well, he, he was that left fielder. Oh yes, yeah, there the you left go. fielder. I, I had a little, I had a little, uh, I had a little experience out there in left field myself, and, and I, I got in trouble because apparently I was out there trying to catch as many butterflies as I was trying to catch fly balls. That, that was that was the one problem. But then when it came time to bat, I was always scared of the ball. Oh yeah, and now you can't be scared of the ball. You got to go up there looking to hit it. You got to go up there looking to punish it, man. Yeah. So the, typically, the only way I got to first base was I got to walk. There you go. <laughs> Just about everybody's got some funny stories from little league, though. I'm, my my daughter, you know, played up into up until pitching machine and everything. And unfortunately, she showed me and a couple of the guys that I had helping coach her team that she could play catcher. And uh, so she always got stuck behind the plate, you know, uh, having to catch, getting dirt thrown all over, and you know, because that pitching machine just kind of throws it everywhere, you know. And she'd have set fire to that pitching equipment before it was all over with if we'd have <laughs> let her, you know. We'd always start some other girl at pitcher, and they'd take one off the knee or something, and they'd come out, you know, crying because, I mean, it's a tough job, you know. You're out there, you're hot, you're dirty, and now the ball just hits you, you know, and your leg hurts and all that. We'd wave Callie in from left field and say, Callie, come in here and uh, play catcher. She'd act like she didn't hear us for a little while. We'd be like, Callie, right, come on. <laughs> She'd finally come on in, kick in the dirt, play catcher for you. <laughs> but, yeah, lots of fun, man. Got to get out there and see these youth, uh, youth uh, players. I mean, again, obviously, this is junior high, high school kid, age kids. It's a pretty good brand of baseball and everything. And uh, we, we invite everybody to come out. 
and uh, join in in the festivities. John, I know both places will have concession stands. Do we have any idea about admission or anything like that at this point? Yes, sir. Uh, we'll have full concession running at both places, and um, and then gate fee is $5 per game, or you can buy a tournament pass for $15, so it's pretty cheap entertainment, and uh, come out and see us. Absolutely. five dollars. Uh, I mean, that uh, tournament pass, that's probably the way to go because, you know, you go out there and you watch and you just kind of end up adopting one of these teams and everything. You say, that's my squad. Okay, when do we play next? We won, we lost, uh, you know, what, what time do we play next? Just go ahead and get that tournament pass and come on out and see a whole weekend of some great baseball. What do you think, JJ? Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm sitting over here trying to watch y'all's volume levels. Oh, because, yeah. Yeah, you're, you're killing me with that microphone. But Yeah, you know, you know it'd be it, nice if we yeah, had a third if mic. If I had my third microphone in That here, we've only been uh, asking for for two and a half, three years. Six years. JJ's been doing the morning show for six years. Who's, who, who are we waiting on to install that third mic? Duck Bryce. Okay, there you go. Look out! Duck! What? Yes. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah, I've already got a text message from somebody who said you're killing me with the mic, Smalls. Yeah, they they were, no, it wasn't for me this time. No, it wasn't from you. It was, it was from somebody else. All right. Well, I, I I'm sitting over here working the uh, volume over <laughs> just as fast and furious as I can. I like, understand. It's Kelly that I'm dealing with. So yeah. yeah. So uh, you know, first game starts at on Friday. We're we're still narrowing down. You know. It, when what team is going to play at what time? Friday TBD. Yes, but okay. we'll definitely get started on Friday. Probably have games at noon, three and six. We just hadn't filled in those blanks just yet. I got you. So it could be as soon, but like one, John four said, and seven. Tomorrow is like the last day to sign up. So we're definitely going to know who's coming after tomorrow, and we immediately pencil in those uh, teams. You know, as soon as we know key word being their pencil i say all the time summertime baseball written in pencil and buy an extra and eraser because you know you, they're they're like we're coming no we can't make it okay so scratch them out put somebody else in that spot and go from there well i i just think it's wonderful that we have these programs that the kids around here can uh get behind and get involved in all year long so you know mr dawson thank you so much for all that you're doing for the youth and you know i mean hey anywhere else any other ways that we can help, you guys just let us know, of course. There you go. You know, the morning shore is always open. It's fun. Fun, fun, fun. Come on out and watch these kids play some baseball. It's a good brand of baseball, too. But, you know, it's youth league baseball, so it's not like, you know, uh, the shortstop. You know, you're like, I need you to move over to third. Now, I don't get paid to play third, man. I, I'm making multi-millions of dollars. I, I play short. I don't play third. No. Johnny might start it. You know, pitcher, he might move to catcher. He might be out in right field before it's all over with. He might be at first base. Who knows? Who's on first? We'll double check after this inning gets started. There you go. All right, guys. Uh, all the action will get started this Friday. Friday, yes. And uh, single game passes are $5. Uh, you can get the tournament pass. That's your best bet. Yes. Uh, what, 15 a day or $15 15 a day? $15. And see, this thing will run through like Tuesday. So your team – could end up playing four, five, six games before it's all over with. Double elimination format. So, you know, again, your team could play multiple games. Just go ahead and get that $15 pass and don't worry about it. You not, not only watch your team, then you can turn around and watch the team that your team's going to play next, too, you know. so Yeah, because uh, it is double elimination. Absolutely. All right, guys, thank you so much for uh, coming in, John. We appreciate everything that you're doing. Thank you all so much. All right, Duck Bryce, you got anything over there? Uh, news? <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's our doc. Right. I got weather. You got weather? Yeah. Oh. I already did weather. No, I mean, we got weather coming into the week. Oh. So there's going to be more weather. Oh, yeah, there's definitely more weather coming. All right, you want to talk about it? Uh, there's rain in the forecast. That's not until Wednesday, and it's a 20% chance. Yeah, there's still rain in the forecast. Though. Who knows? Maybe we'll get lucky and that'll cool us down yeah well that's fine it can rain all at once between now and thursday i'm fine with that because uh come friday <laughs> we need uh clear blue skies right yeah they're, they're only showing in the night and wait a minute school. don't we have a oh we do no we need it to not rain wednesday and thursday 
Oh yeah, well we're we're going to be out on location. This is true uh, for Littlefield Express on Wednesday and Thursday this week. Right. Uh, you'll have to stay tuned for me to tell you where we're going to be and what time. Yeah. Because we're not going to you see. It's a ticket blitz. Yeah. So I can't tell you where I'm going to be before I get there, right? Right, but we don't want it to be pouring down rain either. Spoiler alert, though, it will be at a local Littlefield Express location. Aren't they all local? Yes. <laughs> ish. <laughs> local ish. Well, you got East Camden and, and you got Harmony Grove, and that's still local. They're kind of out of town, though. No, where we're from, it's still all part of the Metroplex. Yeah, well, there is that. I mean, you know, <laughs> if I can be there within thirty minutes, it's still it's, part it's of local. The, yeah. Okay, so uh, there you go. All right, guys, gals, it's the round. It we'll tell you where we're going to be here in just a little bit. Okay. Tomorrow, the next day. Okay. We'll, we'll definitely tell you by the next day because, well, that's when we're going to be at the first location. Okay. You want to do that? Well, I'm not going to tell him. Kelly, are, are, you, are you getting John out of here? Yeah, he's gone. Oh. Bye, John. <laughs> yeah. Well, they he just sneak in and out. Was, if he was good, I said, yeah, man, you're good. So, yeah. Okay. Well, you know, he, he was good. He said just bye. Just sneak yeah. in and out. I mean, yeah, yeah, there you go. Now, we, we really appreciate John Dawson and uh, all that he does with the kids. It's not easy working with kids, all right? Trust me, we do that from time to time around here. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, we don't like the little crumb snatchers at all. So, what? Uh, <laughs> Stop. But it, it is interesting with summertime baseball, though, because I, I say this all the time, and I mention this when we're actually out there broadcasting games. I'd love to give you the starting lineup 15 minutes before the game starts, like, mm. like those fancy pregame shows they do for the Razorbacks or the Rangers or something, but – we don't know who's there yet before you have 15 minutes before the game starts, you know. More than a couple of times they're like, okay, here's our lineup. And then you see a, another uniform walk in from the other side of the dugout. I'm like, uh-huh, they're fixing to bring me a, a, a different lineup. And they do. So, you know, that's, hey, that's all right. You know, it's summertime, man. There's a lot of stuff going on. Some of these kids are working, you know, have part-time jobs, and they can't get to the ballpark until, you know, after they get off work and all that. So, uh it's kind of a catch-as-catch-can thing, but it's really fun. It's really exciting. And the biggest thing, I mean, from my personal standpoint, we don't have to leave the friendly confines of the Queen City of the Washita. We can stay right here in Camden and see two great tournaments going on this weekend. Absolutely. All right, guys and gals, it's the Roundtable brought to you each and every weekday morning by our friends out at the Flaming Pig Barbecue. Remember the Flaming Pig for all of your catering needs. They'll have another fundraiser coming up, I am sure. Give them a call, 818-5984. As a U-Tech who has multiple job openings for you to uh, choose a career in higher education, apply online at sautech.edu. Go Rockets! St. John's Place and Washington Nursing and Rehab. Check them out online, stjohnsplaceofarkansas.com, washingtonnursing.com. Learn what they can do for you. They are the choice for all of your rehabilitation and long-term care needs, and they provide award-winning short-term therapy services, too. Uh, <sighs> Sorry. Everybody okay? Mm-hmm. You with me? Mm-hmm. All right. First choice, family care. 476 Hospital Drive in Camden, 870 <gasps> Choosing the right doctor for you and your family can be stressful at best. Dr. Smith and her staff will help take the pain away from that process. Go to MyFirstChoiceCare.com, get you a new patient packet, and then call them up, 870-800-9002. OCMC's Chemical Dependency Unit. They'd like me to remind you that you're not alone. Addiction's a tough thing to get past. Make the choice to be a better you. Call 870-836-1289, 1-800-232-1289. Remember, all calls are confidential. Mitch Lowe's Body Shop. If you get put in the ditch, just call Mitch, 837-2560. Stories, floor, and carpet, 870-862-9446. Custom tile showers and kitchen backsplashes are an especiality at Stories, floor, and carpet, 870-862-9446. And by everybody's antiques down in El Dorado, 120 booths, 31,000 square feet. Shop them online, everybody'santiques.com. Call them up. 870-875-1444. Just swing on by Corner of Bradley and West Hillsboro in El Dorado. Doc, what you got? Well, I got Glenn Beck coming up here in a little bit. Huh. See, and, and generally it's already in progress. Yeah, I think we're, we'll, we'll be coming in early. You know, uh, we're, we're getting good at this. No, we're getting that down. It's huh. only taken three years, but we're getting at it. Well, you know, practice makes perfect, right? Yeah. Wake up! <laughs>
That was for Doc because he was rocking back with his eyes closed. Yeah, but I was still communicating though uh, with you. Yeah, whatever. We'll <laughs> be back. Your name here. News Talk 92 KBEU Bearded. News Talk for South Arkansas. News Talk 92 KBEU. ABC News. I'm Jay O'Brien. The last two skips. 